With the political climate as it is, and the Tories experiencing a coronavirus jab bounce, I think we all recognise that, what does a good night for Labour look like on Thursday in your red wall areas? For example, can you win all three of the big ones we're all watching, the West Midlands mayor, the Tees Valley mayor and the Hollypool by-election? Well, look, I think that's up to the voters in those areas. And what is certain is that between now and Thursday, we're going to go out and fight for every single vote. We're not going to take anybody for granted. We always expected that these elections would be difficult for us. But nevertheless, it does feel, as I've been out in different parts of the country, including in Hartlepool twice in the last few weeks, that something has shifted. People have noticed that Labour is under new management and they appreciate it. They are really quite frustrated with the Tory government and the numerous allegations of uh, sleaze and misconduct that have engulfed the Tory party, a prime minister who seems to think he's above the rules. Nevertheless, I think these are going to be difficult elections for us and our job is just to go out and make the case um, and do what we can to earn back people's trust. Uh, of course, no one's actually cast a vote yet, but it, put it another way, is it possible, because you say these elections are going to be difficult, you could lose all of this, or you could lose a Hypo by-election and the West Midlands and Tees Valley mayorities? Well, look, anything is possible. I mean, over the last few years, I've given up predicting what happens in British politics, having seen Brexit and, um, you know, all sorts of different results all over the place. But the, the truth is that people, most people, I think thinking about what they want to do. Some people have sent their postal votes back in, but a lot of people are actually making up their minds. And when we've been door knocking, the most common response is, I'm glad you've come because I'm thinking about it. Now, for a party, my party, that lost uh, our entire base in every nation and region of the UK just over a year ago, that's not a terrible place to be. But obviously, I won't be satisfied until we've got Labour councils all over the country, um, Labour mayors and a Labour government that can start to look to the future. Lisa, that is a fantastic job of expectation management. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 you're, you're calling success the fact that people actually now open the door when the Labour Party <laughs> knocks on it. I mean, come on, you know, this is mid-term. The government has just been through the worst pandemic, uh, well, the worst pandemic ever, uh, but certainly the, the worst troubled times for the government in potentially 100 years. You really should be doing better than just they're opening the door on us. Well, look, I, th I don't think that the government's been through the worst pandemic the country's been through the worst pandemic and surely that's the point most of the time when people open the door and say i'm glad to see you it's because they haven't been focusing very much on politics they've been looking after their family they've been worrying about whether their young people are going to get decent exam results they've been going out to work every day on the front line and worrying about bringing the virus back home to people that they love and care for you know they've been burying family without often being able to say goodbye these are all things that are very much on people's minds at the moment and I think also people are very much looking to the future we sort of feel like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel for the first time in a long time so I don't th you know I think the mood of the country really is about trying to get through this trying to look to the future but when we do turn up they are pleased to see us they have noticed that we're under new management I think that's a good thing. Do you agree that Making some progress in those red wall areas, those areas that, that, that don't use such a painful blow in 2019 is absolutely crucial in these elections. I just think it's crucial full stop. And, you know, Tom, I'm someone who was talking about the problems that we had in many of our towns, in many of these areas a long time ago. And it's emotional for me. It's personal. These are not just my constituents. They're my friends. They're my neighbours. They're my family. And for a long time, a very long time, not just in the last few years, people have felt that Labour was moving away from them. The case that we're making at these elections is that Labour is under new management. We are relentlessly focused on rebuilding the foundations of this country and that we are coming home to them. And that's why Keir's out all over the country at the moment, knocking on doors, making that case, meeting people. Anna Sarwar's doing the same in Scotland, Mark Drakeford in Wales. We are absolutely determined that the mm. message that people will get loud and clear is that we're coming home to them. Well, well, we'll get to Scotland and Wales in a moment, but just to keep with the red wall, we are right, there has been a little bit of tightening in the polls over the, the last few days, maybe. There's still a reasonably healthy Tory lead over you. And there was a really striking finding in a YouGov poll this week. You say the party's under new management, and it is. But... This YouGov poll still found that amongst C2 DEs, working class people, perhaps as we used to call them, still are, uh, support for the Tories amongst them is at a massive 48%. So 40, 42% overall, but 48% in your working class base, the people used to vote for Labour by the wheelbarrow load. That must still worry you. Well, I mean, it hurts. Um, and it's hurt for a long time as we've seen that, that those voters 
who founded the Labour Party, who were, we were founded to represent, move away from us. They haven't just moved to the Tories, they've moved in multiple different directions and some of them stay at home as well. But I feel that we're we're slowly starting to regain the trust of people like that. I was out Where's in the Derby. Evidence, though, Lisa? Sorry to interrupt, but I just, no, I just, I just in the poll. Give you, well, I'll just give you an example. I mean, I was out in Derby um, on Friday knocking on doors and some one of the women who opened the door said you know i'm i'm probably going to vote tory this time and her neighbor shouted across the street shame on you denise what about our nurses now they're friends they're, they're better friends than that might suggest but you know there's a live debate going on in communities like mine at the moment about whether you really can trust the tories to stand up for you many people lent their vote to the tory party for the first time in recent years because they were so fed up with us but I think people are starting to get increasingly frustrated with a Tory government that believes that the rules are for other people and never for them How many times has Tory sleaze come up on the doorstep when you've been out? It's come up quite a bit so it usually comes up in the context of uh, of trust so for example the other day I was in Bury door knocking a guy leaning out the window shouting never again I uh, the last election was a very difficult one for Labour so I assumed that he was talking about us I went jogging down the road to rescue the canvasser on the doorstep and it turned out he was talking about the Tories. He'd lent his vote to the Tories in 2019. He thought what was going on was disgraceful and he was never voting for them again. He was going to vote for us. Now, you know, he's just one guy, but yeah, it has come up. I think people's sense of decency is really offended by the way that the Prime Minister carries on. Well, uh, interesting that you came across someone, every Tory MP I speak to, and also people I trust off the record say, it just isn't cutting through. They're just not... We hear what you're saying, we hear the allegations you're making, and indeed there are some big questions the Prime Minister still needs to answer. But voters just simply aren't connecting with this issue yet. I think the the question is whether it translates into a different outcome on Thursday, and on that I'm genuinely not sure... I still think these are going to be difficult elections for us. I've always thought they were going to be difficult elections for us. But I do think people have noticed, and I think people care very much about whether they can trust the Prime Minister. It's not. I don't think it's so much about wallpaper, really. I think it's far more about whether he thinks that the rules apply to him and to people like him. You know, when you've got Tory ministers who can break the ministerial code and stay in post, when you've got advisers who can drive around the country with COVID in lockdown, I think people really do care about that, actually. Let's move on to Scotland. What does a good night for Labour look like uh, in Scotland on Thursday? Because in 2016, you won 23 out of the 129 Hollywood seats. You were in third place by the Tories. So second place minimum? Well, look, a year ago we were in fourth place and now we're fighting for second place. But I know Anas Sarwar, he is not going to be happy until he has regained the trust of the Scottish people um, and uh, is able to move the country forwards after years of infighting and division amongst the SNP and attempts to stoke that division in Scotland. Uh, he's been in post eight weeks, but I think it's pretty clear already that he's connecting with the electorate. And he just, you know, for me, he... He feels like the future of Scotland, leaving behind all that division, bringing the country together and starting to focus on the future of young people, lifting children out of poverty, investing in people's mental health. These are all things he's been talking about on the campaign trail. And I think starting to cut through, but, you know, he only became leader eight weeks ago. So, like I said, it's, you know, this is a, a difficult set of elections for us. No question about it. And what should Boris Johnson's government, the UK government, say on May the 7th if Nicola Sturgeon does win a majority for independence, either uh, with MPs or, or with uh, a, a national popular vote over 50% for independence-supporting uh, parties? Should he rule one out full stop or just this delaying tactic of, if not now, when? Well, look, Nicola Sturgeon wants to make this all about independence. I think but it's all about independence, it... isn't it, though, really? And it's the, the massive issue on, on the ballot box. It's one issue, but it's not the only issue. You know, there's a, a front page of one of the Scottish papers today which showed that the SNP are on course perhaps to get a majority at Holyrood, but that support for independence has fallen. So people vote for all sorts of reasons in these elections. They will vote for all sorts of reasons in these elections. And what I would just say to any Scottish voter who isn't supportive of the independence cause is I would think very, very carefully before you lend your vote to the SNP because Nicola Sturgeon has shown that it will be used to try to win support for another divisive referendum. Um, and if you want to focus on the future of Scotland, the real, the real choice is to vote Labour.
So just so that Labour voters or uh, Scottish voters can be absolutely clear where the Labour Party is, because you've been slightly wobbling over whether you think a referendum is a good idea or a bad idea, or certainly Keir Starmer has been. Should there be a referendum on uh, independence again or not, in the Labour Party's view? Look, we, we believe in the United Kingdom. We've always believed in the United Kingdom and we're going out and making that case. We think another referendum would hold Scotland back and needlessly divide people at a time when we need to be focusing on the future. And even amongst those voters who want to see a second referendum, they don't want to see a second referendum now. They want to see the country moving forwards. So that's what Anna Sawa offers in this election and Scottish Labour. And that's why we're going out fighting for every vote.